come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Because we are on a quest to take over the known universe. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. John. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by. Colin. Uh, where'd we go? We went back to 1971. We got in the old time machine and we watched the cult classic car chase movie. The ultimate car chase movie. Is according it? to the uh, poster art. Mm. Vanishing <laughs> Point. Although, apologies, listeners. I know this is very hard to come by. Uh, apparently, it's available now. That's, I guess, the thing about this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can't stream this movie. No, huh. nowhere. No, nowhere. Uh, it's available on like the Internet Movie Database. Somebody's got it. I mean, it, it was a Blu-ray in the Walmart ten dollar bin. You know, forever. Yeah, um, I know. I've seen this particular Blu-ray you have before. Like, yeah. I've seen this on the shelf somewhere because that artwork is so, like... The artwork is very misleading because it does not look like No, it, it, right. at all. The, the artwork on this Blu-ray looks like a 2005, like, bargain bin yeah. movie. That it I looks know. like a fake movie. That I yeah. don't want to watch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It looks cheap and fake and, like, yeah. there's no stars on the front. It's just a generic image. Yeah, it's not yeah. great. Yeah, they're like, uh, Fast and the Furious is popular. Yep, yep. That's Y'all like were, cars, sort of right? Yeah. <laughs> like, as soon as I see that, I'm like, oh, it's probably a Jason Statham movie. Yeah, right. exactly. Oh. That's yeah. what it got that like. blue yeah, tint, like yeah. all of his. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, that would be next to Crank on the shelf. Yep, that's exactly. for sure. Yeah. Although, if you do look this up, you may find the 90s remake, which was made for TV and stars Vigo Mortensen. So, that you might, oh, I think yeah. that one might be streaming somewhere. What, forever. what year was that? Uh, it was in the mid '90s, like '96 or '97 or something like that, wasn't it? So it was a made-for-TV remake. remake of that. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, interesting. there's some differences in the plot, uh, which we can cover if you want. Speaking later of on, differences, but... what version of this movie did we watch? Oh yeah, um, uh, so Vanishing Point, when it was released here in the states, is slightly different than the UK version, which is the one we watched. And the difference is the Charlotte Rampling scenes are missing from the American version. Oh. Yeah. So I guess we'll talk I about mean, that as yeah. we get to that point okay. in the movie. But like, if you imagine if those were gone, that's what American is audiences that got. That's it. Well, it is specifically uh, just not, her scenes. I'm not going to lie, Colin. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good call on that one, yep. USA. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we have to. I, I was like, yeah, hey, we'll watch the complete version. Uh, I think it added more confusion. It and really did. I, don't I think, think it that's why they took anything. it out. Yeah. Um, well, okay. And uh, because we like to simplify things. Yes. <laughs> right. And it was directed by uh, Richard Serifian, if I'm saying his name Do correctly. Do we know Richard Serifian? A lot of like 50s, 60s, 70s uh, television um shows okay um it's some feature films but i was looking over his filmography and probably nothing that would stand out at least not to myself mm-hmm. okay yeah so vanishing point who's, um, our, who's our star in this movie uh barry newman and now do we should we know barry newman he was i think at the time that this came out there was a very popular at least for a couple of years uh television show um I think he was like an attorney. I can't remember what it was called. It was his name. It was like Picolero or something like that. I'm messing that <laughs> up. But oh, I'm, I'm like, well, no, I'm calling I mean, it Pic- I like Picolero. Picolero. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, That's what it is now. He was in that. I mean, he's been a working actor forever. Yeah. So he's been in movies like Bowfinger and stuff like that. Okay. But uh, never like a leading man thing other than this one. I guess the studio initially, this is a 20th, 20th Century Fox yeah. movie. They wanted Gene Hackman, but he uh, turned him down. And uh, Barry Newman, star of Piccolo, that <laughs> TV show. Uh, it starts with a P, and I mean, I think it's the thing he's most known for. Okay. Aside from this, uh, yeah. Sally. Yes. <laughs> ironic that you say yes. That was the Petroselli. Petroselli. <laughs> you guys, he was in three episodes of the OC. Really? Yes. yes. Who? who was he? Professor Max Bloom. You remember? At who's don't remember? At school. I don't know, but he was in three episodes, so he must have had an arc of some sort. Like, maybe he had a problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah he had to have. Right, I'm hmm. gonna yeah. Google that. Yeah. 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 And he was an episode of the Ghost Whisperer, yes. if I'm correct. Yes, yeah, he was an episode of Ghost Whisperer. Yeah, last week's yes. episode. Interesting. 
Um, I mean, he's the main main star. Um, you would also recognize Cleavon Little, um, who a couple years after this was made, this was 71. Cleavon Little was in uh, Blazing Saddles with Gene Wilder. Um, yes. Yeah. That one I recognize. Yeah. And so he's super soul. He's basically the other half of this movie. And then um, who else would you recognize? John Amos is in here. Uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants us to know that, yes, we are putting John Amos on the Wall of Fame uh, because he was Super Soul's uh, engineer. Producer, yeah, engineer. Yeah. yeah. In this, uncredited, apparently. He's not in the credits, but he was also Seth in The Beastmaster. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was a detective at the end of Two Evil Eyes, the Dario Argento oh, wow. segment. Oh, wow. He was in Coming to Evil America, Eyes. wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes. That's how I know him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been in a ton of stuff. A ton of stuff. And uh, also, um, people that you may recognize, um, Dean Jagger is in this movie. Uh, we Is Dean Jagger? Dean Jagger is in this movie. And uh, he was a working Hollywood actor. He was in a lot of movies, uh, a lot of TV shows, uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s. No, he was the old prospector. But we remember him as the bald uh, corporate head of the company that's poisoning the sewers in Alligator. Oh. Yeah. Ah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> now it all comes together. He was also, I think, the big bad uh, corporate guy in the finished version of Game of Death, the Bruce Lee gotcha. uh, movie. But yeah, he was Which around. Stay forever. tuned for that. But the main star of Vanishing Point is, is a Dodge Charger. <laughs> the yeah. 1970. Dodge Charger, yeah. RT, also, also the car in uh, Dirty Mary Crazy Larry, is the Dodge Charger RT. It's also Dom Toretto's favorite car of in the Fast and the Furious movies. Uh, why the Dodge, cha- uh, the Dodge Challenger, uh, uh, nineteen seventy Dodge Challenger. Uh, this is like the car that I think like exemplifies like American muscle, right? I mm-hmm. mean, uh, uh, there's well, what's the other ones? Mustang. Mustang. Chevelle. Mm, yeah, I love a Chevelle. Chevelles are good. Super Sport. 1971 Super Sport Chevelle. Like, yeah, that's a and like a red sweet car. The Plymouth Barracuda. Barracuda. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like all these cars are Nova. gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nova. the Chevy Nova. <laughs> yeah. What's a what's a muscle car? It's got a big fucking loud engine. Is what it's got. Yeah, That's right. I I'm not. I'm not a car guy, Colin. I don't know this kind of stuff. <laughs> like it, it, it's when it revs, it sounds like it's going. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's it, it, right? Like, like it can move shit. Well, fast. I got into the the weeds because I was like, oh, it's a, mm-hmm. a muscle car, but you hear pony cars, right? Sports cars, mm-hmm. but a muscle car apparently has two doors. It has a big ass engine. It's got to be a V8, and it mm-hmm. is basically designed to go. In a straight line, as fast as fucking possible. <laughs> yeah. It's like putting an airplane jet engine in a car. Yeah. Mm. It's, and it it's goes. All about, it's all about the horsepower. That's yeah. where the muscle comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, muscle of horses. Yeah. Yes. Because cause that's <laughs> the thing. Well, yeah, but there's pony cars. You know, they talk about the Mustang, obviously, is a pony car. And Mustang yeah. came first, I want to say, right? That was developed in like the 60s mm-hmm. or late 50s. And then the Camaro the animal that eats the mustangs and then <laughs> yeah and then the the challenger to you know those yeah. guys yeah. um but yeah i guess like eventually they said that you know like camaros and mustangs have evolved into like basically sports cars because they're more yes. about aerodynamics and mm-hmm. handling on curves and all this well, other stuff the, but. i don't think the mustang's even a sports car anymore like it stopped being a muscle car a long time ago it's becoming more luxury yeah well now that's now like have, it now looks like an suv yeah, like, now yeah. Oh, the electric now one yeah. yeah but like but if a, if a muscle car has to have two doors we a mustang left muscle car behind a long time ago then because they've been making four-door ones for a while like i feel like something yeah. happened in like 99 2000- when yeah all, when all of a sudden everyone could afford a mustang yes exactly yeah i remember you yeah, had that when the when the millennium body style came out yeah. all of a sudden everyone could afford yeah, to have my a mustang brother's friend yes. had a red mustang <laughs> yep they'd pick me up from school mm-hmm. and i felt like such hot yep. shit <laughs> and that's when it's cache you know i jumped the shark at that it moment did, it yeah. really jumped the shark yeah you know, it was all better when it came back to the old body style yeah, there yeah, was, but now they've undone that again. Yeah. Well, this new one looks <laughs> yeah, the dark horse looks yeah. pretty cool, but I mean yeah. they do look like uh, sports cars. Um, I guess yeah, like muscle cars kind of fell out of um, favor because there was that whole like you know, uh, it, well I mean emissions, right? Emissions, uh, like we've been clamping legality, down. It. I'm sure there were laws that came into play that 
kind of shut down these being regular street cars more so and made them more it's specialized. Too much power. Yeah. It's like you put, barely touch the gas. Yeah. And you're like, you know, we gonna, can't have this on the, the front end's going to lift up <laughs> off the, you know. Now you're just going straight uh, fast and furious. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. It's like basically, it's like it was. they were hot cars oh. with, uh, you know, the muscle cars with teenagers who wanted to rig them up with turbochargers and drag race on a Saturday night. Oh, actually, that reminds me. So, there's a story. <laughs> Colin killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, about specifically the 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 Challenger, right? There's there was there was the story of the Black Ghost. Ooh. Oh, which oh, like this is in Detroit, right? There was the uh, uh, on Saturday night like street uh, meets. There was always this like black Challenger that would appear and it would race and it would win. Like, and I guess it had like a snakeskin hood and all this other stuff. And, and you, nobody nev- and you know, never saw the driver. Nobody knew who the driver was. <gasps> he would race and he would disappear. So this is the Wraith. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Oh my gosh. Of course, they found oh. out later. You want me to tell you? No. No. Okay. Don't spoil yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to know. He was a police officer. So, oh, was, oh. <laughs> so he's like, I have to do this undercover. Was yeah. he undercover to bust people or just because he wanted no, to his he identity? No, he liked racing. I mean, you like, go. you know, I you go like to these better. fucking car shows now, and it's like every single car has like a, a state police bumper st- or a license plate on it. It's like those these guys, you know, in the 60s now yeah. and buying these hot cars is because they had, you know, like chargers and stuff like that and were in street chases before those are all made illegal. Now yeah. they're retired. They're like, I want that car back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, I guess I picked this movie because uh, this is the uh, the elegy uh, for the Challenger because this is the last year that they're making them. They brought them back in uh, 2000. And I think they had stopped making them in 83. They brought them back in 2000 and five as a concept in 2006 yeah. and that basically ushered in the modern um you know sports car muscle car era yeah because the camaro came back with transformers in mm-hmm. uh in in 2010 and the mustangs i guess are always been in production but mm-hmm. uh yeah they said this is it uh they're done Damn. uh they're never going to make another one they're now moving over to electric vehicles there's a, a one that does like you know the electric one does zero to 60 and like two and a half seconds or some crazy but it's not so fun to have an electric challenger well we'll see i don't know it's still (laughs) it's called the dodge charger daytona or whatever but it's the electric one but i was gonna say the charger is perfect for yeah it's just on name alone i was like yeah name alone it should be a charger Mm -hmm. yeah you charge it obviously yeah Yeah. because that was like this yeah Mm -hmm. and they have like a similar like they ride on the same platform they Mm -hmm. just have like a different body style or whatever but Mm -hmm. uh yeah to celebrate um Dodge is going out with like okay last <laughs> last yeah. call models of uh, the 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 Challenger. Yeah. So they have like a black ghost version that you can get mm. and uh, the Super B and they also do have uh the last one. It's called the Demon 170 which runs on like ethanol fuel and can go 0 to 60 in 1.3 seconds and comes with a parachute. And this is why <laughs> car aficionados love Dodge because Dodge is crazy. Well, and they're out yeah. there like you just want to go fast, right? <laughs> you know? I do just want to go fast. <laughs> plus, plus, they're right. I love that they're just like let's just we're gonna fucking call it the demon. Yeah, yeah. Just well, like, that's yeah, a callback to an old yeah. Car to be called. Yeah, yeah. I, I drive have, a fusion. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a problem with wanting to drive fast. This just doesn't help. Right. Yeah. I really want to drive now. Well, that one I don't even think comes with a passenger seat. <laughs> the Dodge Demon 170. No one needs to ride. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's just like a roll cage. No, like, yeah. You only want one person to die in this car when you <laughs> crash it and go off the road. Is there at least a spot for my purse? I'm sure it has. Okay. Yeah, somewhere there's Cup stories. Holders? I don't. I don't okay, actually. Put it on your seat because you'll only need the edge. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't even think. <laughs> I don't even think it has like uh, uh, like a radio in it. I, well, I'm like, gonna need to play tunes. When yeah. I'm driving fast. They're yeah. like it's all engine. And I need a cup holder crazy crazy stuff yeah they gotta have it for your drink so it doesn't like yeah. spill all over you yeah. when you have the the optional parachute explode out of the uh, back of the that's car. wonderful um in traffic and you actually hit the parachute button yeah <laughs> i'm like how do you deploy i don't know you have to I, mean, I think you, I, it may, I maybe it's, it's set off like you can only deploy it once you get past a certain speed so i mean i really out. hope they utilize this in a fast and furious i was gonna say like why are they not doing cross promotion if yeah. this is like the last call of them and they have one called the demon and all this special shit all, i feel like all these last models should be in do they i yeah. okay i'm not super familiar with the fast and furious movies do they do like is it 
product placement cars or no? It doesn't. Yeah. Is I it? think they have. It ha- like to get, at this point, funding, has to be. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I was looking up like, you know, uh, just in doing research for this, it's like, okay, what's Dom's cars? And he's driven like been seen yeah. in like 13 different cars that are all, you right. know, and it's like. even Right. But is there ever like a cross promo with like, like, hey, this new model's coming out. Let's feature it in this movie. Do they do that? Like, because I feel like they're yes. always driving vintage muscle cars oh, no, for the most no, part, no. right? Newer, newer movies. Yeah. 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 I think the one that well, they drove the, from building to building was I was going to say in the, in the. Featured. The original movies, they were like, uh, what were they? Like Hondas. Hondas, yeah. 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 Like Hondas. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And I'm just kind of surprised. I know that for it's... the most recent one, um, AMC did a promotional like popcorn thing. Yeah, and that was, was Dom's car. car. It was yeah. The car. yeah. Yeah. I saw that and I could I thought that was fucking hilarious. It was the but, Challenger, yeah. the black. Yeah. yeah. But he's yes. got the supercharger yeah. like up on top yeah. of it or whatever. What I haven't seen is that uh, anybody from the movies doing a commercial for the car. That's right. what I'm saying. Like, because how is it not going both ways? Right, yeah, I've seen fucking Spider Man do commercials for cars. exactly. That's why yeah. I haven't seen any the of the fucking Hanson event. Brie do. Larson does fucking car commercials yeah, like constantly, yeah. and yeah, that's why I'm kind of surprised. Did that Jaguar commercial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marvel's so that's, doing it. Uh, yeah, they had it. There was an Audi. The Audi in yeah. Avengers was egregious. Oh my god! Every <laughs> shot of that car pulling up and like the logo <laughs> was front and center. That was a. Yeah. That's why I'm surprised the Fast and the Furious doesn't do that. Yeah, you know, I was kind of surprised too. Yeah, especially with this. Like, if you're doing these special editions, you'd think they'd slip the yeah. special How editions into these movies. How is there not a edition of a car? Yeah, right. exactly. Well, I know the guy who plays uh, is it Kang. He yeah. has his own. Like, he has made because it's in the Gran Turismo video game. Mm. This company that he made to make like a special like car based on it's like you know so some of them are car guys. You know, mm-hmm. out there going like no, they want, you know, design it like this. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I guess while you can still get a car that you can work on. Uh, right. <laughs> you know? yeah, they're all going to turn to iPhones at a certain point. It's like, no, we can't open the hood. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I know Sony's you know got like some car that like you I'm buy not good at handling once. it on my own anyway, so that's fine. You know what? Yeah. Like, there's some things I shouldn't be allowed to do. And, you know, working on my car is probably one of them. So, yeah. you know. Well, what? now you won't have to. Yeah. Cars eventually you'll just like you'll order them on Uber and they'll show up at your house and rock at you at 90 miles an hour down the freeway and. That'd be great. They'll have your custom settings and all that stuff. And yeah. But back in the Isn't 70s, that just a train at that point? Basically. Like, yeah. <laughs> our cars just gonna become trains and then it was like, yeah, well, we've yeah. circled well, they back. Even have steering all wheels. Talk to each other at a certain point. Yeah. And then they'll be on tracks, on yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's why I they mean, can go that fast. Is, yeah. you, uh, I mean yeah. if that if that pushes the U- if that pushes the US to amp up our public transportation, so let's, do let's, it. Do it. let's do it. Let's do it. Jesus Christ, let's do it. Yeah. You won't, anyway. you won't own your own car. You just lease it. You rent no, a subscription then, no, rate. But they'll, be the, they'll have the, the general public will be on that, but then the rebels will, be, will go back to muscle cars oh. and take, oh. take the streets back. They'll be like your physical media people. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Those guys <laughs> are going to be Holly around. and I yeah. will be on the light rail yeah. living our best life while you guys okay. are like <laughs> right. trying to find oil yeah. somewhere to put in your cars. Yeah. I'm going to take that. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to take that fucking bullet train and you're going to be Mad Max. Exactly. Exactly. Nowhere. Yes. Great. Holly and I are going to be listening to podcasts on the fucking yep. bullet train, and you guys are going to be, we'll be living yeah. life. Yes. <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> trying to find the parts, scavenging parts of the scavenging parts, scavenging parts yeah. and Blu rays. Right, like the think- back of your car is <laughs> filled up with Blu rays. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'll kick in some Blu rays. Yeah. If you think being a car. scavenger is the life, then have fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm see, moving like, forward we'll on this. Find, I mean, you can't ride the rails. You're going to be a feral person. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. But I definitely won't be driving either. So, yeah. Desert snake dude. Yeah. I will be. That's true. Yes. More, less, less vocabulary. Yeah, ah, yeah. Ah, snake. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm the swamp snake lady, yeah. so you know. We'll go that way. Yeah. yeah. Bit you're, of a star-crossed like, lover situation. Yeah. Like you yeah. Arms yeah. I take care of the water snakes. He does the Google. desert snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be fucking Voldemort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, she's gonna be. Uh, yeah. No, see, him, me and the snake basket guy, we have a will there, won't they? He takes care of the desert snakes. I take care of the swamp snakes. Oh. So it's yeah. like we have a common interest, but like opposite ends of the spectrum. So how do we make it work? Because like that's I true. need water and he needs desert. So yeah. that's my future. <laughs> I love yeah. this. Yeah. I am, sh- I am totally will, shipping this. Yes. One, but then there will be a fight one day and one of you will strangle the other with a snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have water moccasins on my side. There so, you go. Yeah. Oh my gosh, got those. Yeah. He's got hand snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a basket full. Yeah. Uh, the, Finger snakes. Yeah, the Fantasy Island hand snakes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you may find it weird that we're talking about snake wrangling <laughs> and talking about a movie about a car, but that's because, I mean, what? There's a scene where uh, it's a movie. 
it's a car chase. It's an action yeah. movie yeah, yeah, yeah. about a guy who basically is on a cross multi-state car chase and meets interesting people along the way, including and contemplates life. Yeah. A guy who's just kind of given up. on life. Yeah. Do you burn yeah. out? Is that what's going on yeah. with Kowalski? Yeah. 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 Sure, in some in some aspects, sure. In most of them. Okay. Yeah. Such as what are we? What are we talking? What's his cycle? Well, why? Why burn out? Oh, that's I said that. Oh, okay. I mean, but, but but yeah, like I mean, yeah. So we're seeing this guy. He's driving across country. Um, he's he's delivering a car, right? Yeah, that's what he does. But he along delivers. the way, he ends up. He's like he's totally focused on making time, right? right? His end goal is San Francisco. He wants to make it by his deadline, and he's like pushing himself to an impossible deadline. And along the way. He starts being chased by the cops, obviously, because he's going like 160 miles an hour. Yeah. And th- that's basically the rest of the movie is them chasing him. But along the way, we're seeing flashbacks of like his previous life before he did this job where he just delivers cars. And each memory is kind of tragic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All and of it's, them. it's showing like that it's led up to this point where he's just like driving and he's just like, fuck everything. Yeah, because when we first meet him, I think like the first like lines of dialogue that he has is when he's at the the auto place and he's like, okay, what do you got? I got to go back. It's like 11 o'clock at night in Denver. And he's like, okay, what do you got for me? I'm going to go back out. And the guy's like, it's like 1130 at night and you haven't slept. And my God, you know, and he's like, no, I just got to go. Yeah. I mean, he's a man who's driven, driven to drive. It needs speed. I think it's the only thing he's got. No, no sane person does this. Yeah. Okay. No. The so only we know right person. off no. the bat. Yeah. That yeah. They're and saying, especially because his first stop on the way is to see his friend and get some speed so he can survive. Yes. The drive. Yeah. L- like yeah. actual drugs, like l- literal speed. Yes. But also like any think of any time in real life you've heard a story about someone driving across states and not stopping. It's never been for a good reason, right? Like it's been a it's been an astronaut lady that wanted to kill someone. Right. It's been Jody Arias who did kill someone. Like these are the people that wear diapers and don't stop. Like, and this is his vibe. Like, yeah, he, he does not stop to eat. I didn't get the yeah. piss. Nothing that that he was taking speed. speed. For speed. Like, I, oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah all, I didn't. I, yeah. I just they literally said that. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's um. Yeah, because we like Holly was saying, we learn like his backstory and flashbacks throughout the mm-hmm. the the movie. So, what do we know about Kowalski? Because apparently, he has no first name. Um, just he's just Kowalski. First, last and forever. That yeah, first, and now and forever. Yeah. yeah. So we know he was um, he's at one top. point. Well, before that, right? Was he? Uh, or yeah, he. Well, it says that he. I don't know the necessarily order. But... Yeah, if they're in order, he he yeah. was a marine. Mm-hmm. Right, he, or an army. He enlisted yeah. in in Vietnam, where he was wounded. Yeah, he got a medal of honor, which I love when movies just throw that around. Like, right, people get like, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's so fucking rare. Yeah, that's doesn't does happen not often, happen. Yeah, but whatever. He got yeah. a medal of mm-hmm. honor. He was a soldier, uh, honorable discharge. Mm-hmm. Wounded. Uh, wounded. Yeah, hates what the scar means. Mm-hmm. Tells his uh, wife or girlfriend. Or yeah, whatever. and then eventually he's a cop. Yeah, and he's also a. He got up to detective. Yeah. Point. And then it says, he was I think a race car driver. Af- I think that was after and a motorcycle right? racer. Yeah. yeah. So I get the idea that, but the, and then there's, there is a relationship in there. Like we see him as a police officer. He, uh, stops his partner from basically raping this, uh, girl that they busted for pot possession or something. Yeah. And he's trying, you know, where's the, the, where'd you get it from or whatever. And Kowalski, you know, has a conscience and inner, inner, interrupts this from happening and that's uh, you know so we see that so he's like disillusioned with police Mm -hmm. um and then he as a cop i think he meets this woman who offers him uh he offers him like she rolls her own joint Mm -hmm. and he refuses and she says what what was the line like i was trying to turn you on while you were trying to turn me in (laughs) (laughs) or something like Mm -hmm. that and it seems like that's like his romance of his life but mm-hmm. she apparently dies in a uh free surf- surfing accident where, yeah <laughs> and so i think that sets him off and then he becomes like a thrill seeker right then mm-hmm. he's like a, a, a motorcycle racer mm-hmm. and a race car driver he gets in derby yeah and then eventually like delivers cars so it's like i guess that's where you know i was thinking like burnout it's like there's there's a tragic past yeah, to this guy he's, like he's seen war He's he's had love and he's lost it tragically. He's 
been in this like supposedly honorable position as a police officer and seen that there's like complete corruption and injustice there. So like everything that he thinks is good, he sees it turn bad. Oh, man, it's still good. The only thing Speed. that, yeah, the only thing he can rely it's on is road. driving. Yeah. And there, he's in control. Yeah. Just him. It's a pretty extreme midlife car. crisis. <laughs> I mean, I get it. <laughs> I'm calling it of life crisis. <laughs> <laughs> well, spoiler alert. Sean. <laughs> well, he has a, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, it's like it's a, the car chase um, begins for. It doesn't fuck yeah. I think it's like, you know, because, yeah, it, I think they say, like, the cops are like, well, what are we, what are we getting him on? And it's like, well, it's a misdemeanor, you know? Yeah, and like, right. basically, he was speeding. He didn't actually do anything. Right. He's speeding because I think, like, he, it was the morning after, you know, he's on the road yeah. and a cop tried to pull him over and he disregards the, the motorcycle cop mm-hmm. and then chase ensues and the cop's bike, like, flips over. Yeah, I mean, they say that they can't get, they can get him on endangerment. They can get him on, mm. like, like possible manslaughter if he hurts anybody. Did those things you exist know? back then? Oh, it's the seventies, sure. probably true. not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. I'm I think, sorry. Yeah, I think, I think when they said it's like it's all we got, I think like they. Had, I was like, how? I was like, oh yeah, it's the seventies. You're right. Yet. You're right. You know, he probably could have like pulled over and just like buzzed his head and then taken off, and they would have been like, well, that guy's gone. Can't find him. Like in the seventies, that's all you had to do to commit a crime was like get a haircut or Pretty like much. you know yeah. leave town for a couple of days and come back. And I don't think they knew good. much of what he looked like anyway. Yeah, they did. The truth. They they had pictures of him. He was a soldier. Oh, he, he was yeah. a cop. He was, yeah. he was a but racer. He was in he the was. paper. Like yeah. they that knew exactly That comes later who he was. as yeah. like as this like blossoms into a multi state you know chase. Yeah. Damn. They find out more because originally it's yeah. like we know his name's Kowalski. First name unknown. Uh, don't we, you don't know? they have it? But they're like, what the hell does that say? One and time. They yeah. one, and they're just like, yeah. that's not a Christian name. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That was. Funny. So we don't know what his name is. Yeah. We don't know what, really what his motive is. We're guessing, but this guy just doesn't want to pull over for the cops. And so he goes, is there uh, like, are they going for like, he's tired of pulling over in life, Colin. Is that well, what it is? No, he just wants to mind his own business and just drive on well, the open road. Every time, every time he slows down in life, something bad happens. Mm-hmm. The only time that things aren't bad is when he's going fast. Yeah. Deep. Sorry, yep. yes. Deep, profound. Is yeah. this one of those kind of movies? It is now, Colin. I it's, yeah, I think it's. <laughs> I mean, I think it's got to be. Otherwise, what is it besides a, just, a very good car chase? Yeah, mm-hmm. I was just driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I think the the Charlotte Rampling scenes. He meets her like very late in the movie, so I don't know if we want to skip ahead or just to talk about it. But well, yeah, the like reason, we haven't even gotten to the DJ yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe we should double back. Yeah, All right, yeah. let's do it in order just do so we can turn? keep this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like let's do a U-turn, yeah. yeah. Good job, Mikhail. Mm-hmm. All right, so <laughs> his antics, I think, while he's still in Colorado, attract mm-hmm. the attention of Super Soul yep. at KOW Radio, mm-hmm. which must have... the Casey Kasem of the South. <laughs> yeah, and he must have... Casey like, Kasem wishes. Yeah, he had never had this much energy. My no. God. But well, you know, I know I'd listen to him. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's amazing to me. Like, is he syndicated? What's going on? Is he have the most uh, powerful transmitter on earth? Apparently, also can be picked up. Reaches in. all the way across <laughs> the country. Yeah. Yes. It kind of feels like pirate radio a little bit. It kind of yeah. does. Yeah. He's a blind uh, DJ, um, Super Soul. And so he picks up on the idea that there is this uh like yeah. you know the the loan because he's his, the one who yeah. builds the the mythology his right? producer like intercepts a police radio report about the whole situation mm-hmm. and right. he basically romanticizes it into this like the last free person in america mm-hmm. yeah. the demi god which uh, i kind you know. of loved <laughs> yeah <laughs> because i mean our main character is somebody's got to do it somebody's got to mm-hmm. build this guy up yeah uh for this movie because our main character yeah, so he's just a silent, lone yeah, person. So we, need, we need a mouthpiece at some point, yeah. and he does it really well. It's like kind of like the Warriors when, uh, is it Big Ben who's narrating them through the city? Uh, Lynn oh, ben. yeah. I forgot about that. Yep, yeah. yeah that's a good point, yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that. Yep. Yeah, because you're right. Uh, Kowalski is a man. A few words, at least. through. Yeah. The, I think the first time he talked was when uh, he did meet the prospector. And that's like well into. Well, no, he, he talked he earlier talks, when he's yeah, oh, at the, get, yeah. get in the car. Yeah. But, then but once the chase starts, yeah. I think yeah. it's. Yeah, it's, it's a, a while. Long time. 
Um, he races some guy in a Jaguar who mm-hmm. pulls up next to him. Yeah, you know? the guy races him. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He comes out of nowhere and is just decides that they're in a street race now. I think more Saturday drivers in their sports cars should wear helmets. <laughs> that was a nice little. Yeah. Like, oh well, at least he's being like, responsible. Like he, that's the, like he was ready. That's what oh, he. he that, yeah, he started his day waiting for <laughs> that to happen. Race some, some yeah. today. <laughs> like, I'm gonna race somebody. God yeah. damn it. My Jaguar. But he ends up in a spectacular crash. Uh, yeah. The Jaguar driver it just splits <laughs> in half. Splits yeah, splits in half when mm-hmm. it flies off a bridge. That was great. Mm-hmm. There's no way the driver survived. But in the movie, no, he survived. He absolutely no way. There's already no top on that, and yeah. then he just flipped over and split in half. But no I way. love that. Like they report that they had caught the police caught up with the guy. And they're like, he doesn't want to press charges, so we can't get him on anything. And I was like, see, that guy woke up that day, knew what he was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to get into a, a race, <laughs> yep. and I don't care what happens. <laughs> well, you got a fast car. I mean, Saturday is the day for doing that, right? You go out and... Uh, yeah, well, that's why you have a fast car. Yeah. What you want? Now they... I don't, now it's like, do they race? Now they just, like, stop intersections and do burnouts with that's, the ring of fire in the middle. Yeah, and yeah. That's mm, yeah. They yeah. race. Like nice <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, on the like, interstates at, like, like 3 o'clock in the morning. I believe me, I hear them yeah. in the middle yeah. of the night. They're <laughs> racing. <laughs> True. <yeah. laughs> Trust me. Um, so, uh, who are the colorful characters that... Uh, well, I suppose you should, you know, like, so the action in this movie, how did it stack up, the car action? It's real, so that is all just automatically a plus in that column. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it is, you know, but it's, um, it's good I mean, driving. I think it's good. It's, it's very good, good driving. driving. Like I said at the beginning, like it feels like this car glides through this room. Like, mm-hmm. It's just, it's, it's, how do you describe it? Charges? It's smooth. <laughs> oh, I, <wouldn't laughs> know. It, I mean, it is going, f- but it just, and it looks fast. I mean, yeah. It's like it is, uh, the driving is photographed very well, I think, especially in, even in the, like the big vistas we see it where he's driving through. Yeah. He's driving through the middle of There's the a lot of it aerial is. wide shots in this, which right? is really nice. Yeah. It's good. It also mm-hmm. gives that sense of, loneliness singularity just him mm-hmm. by himself this tiny little car especially the in the road. desert there's right. a yeah. lot of that in the it desert. has that like yeah. you know it's like the the old west you know vistas of you mm-hmm. know i mean it's just got that kind of scenic it's look like, of the yeah. dusty right. brown we've, we've, we've gone past it but we're mm-hmm. also yeah, still he's the there lo- he's the lone rider on the white horse mm-hmm. right yeah you know, just going through and just trying to stop him well, and some people are trying to help him yeah. Oh, yeah. People like because people he's are a, rooting he's, for he's, him. He's a, uh, American. He's a mythic hero at this point because right? of Super Soul. I think yeah. that's oh, what's yeah. going on. It's like oh, yeah. all these people because Super Soul is operating out of this like one street town. But yes, basically. And I yeah. think like his because that's what I was wondering. Like what was happening? Like people start coming out of the woodwork and they're standing out in front. And they start to congregate in front of mm-hmm. you know the the radio station because. There's like this mythical thing happening um, where like Super Soul seems to. He's like connected. Yeah. Yeah. Be like psychically connected and having conversations Mm -hmm. with Kowalski, or at least it evolves to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and anticipating his moves and kind of like giving him some directions on how to avoid the the cops and all this. Um, I think one of his speeches actually. was used um, by uh, Axl Rose in uh, a Guns N' Roses song called Breakout. You can hear like that whole the blue oh, meanings yeah. at the end of yeah, the... Yeah, you're the right. Soul, you know, yeah. yeah, whoever wrote like, the, the writing for that part is very good. Um, and also whatever um, the actor brought to it. Some, uh, definitely brought a lot to it as well. And Just the, uh, the prose, just the language mm. he uses mm-hmm. to describe mm-hmm. everything is very good. It's very nice. Yeah, the... Um, I mean, yeah, because I guess that's like what he's his what he's fulfilling right in this movie is basically yep. like he's creating the myth of Kowalski, mm-hmm. right, the mm-hmm. driver. But then we humanize him, I guess, by having like and the people that he meets, mm-hmm. um, you know, well, he meets like racers, you know, but, yeah, guy but tries even to like from the cops, but you know, from the start, like I think one of the biggest things that humanizes him right away is whenever there's like an altercation. He always stops yeah. to see yeah. if they're okay. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I thought they mentioned that in the movie, but they don't. Like no. nobody says, like you know, he stops it every single. But he does. Like he, does. he always checks to make sure that, that person like yeah. was okay. When the yep. when the jag split in half, he stopped and checked. When the guy mm-hmm. got up and out of the water, he's like, "All right, now I can go." Yep. Yep. The cop. He. Made I was sure gonna the, say he yeah. was the. He's the only good cop ever. Ever? Apparently. <laughs> Ever? In this, yeah. Maybe? Like, yeah. he's... Yeah. yeah. Well, one I, of the cops ends up being, like, uh, horrible. Well, he's... he's he's 
there's one cop in particular that they single out as like he's the one who really wants to get Kowalski. Yeah. And then he also is like a racist cop who's mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. breaking down the windows of the radio station. Yeah. And they go in and beat up Super Soul. That was and- rough. Yeah. That was, was a rough and scene. And unnecessary. Like, yeah, this is it was. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's someone who is racist and has been looking for a reason to do this for a long time, finally found a reason to do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. It was rough. And then, like, I saw what they were trying to do with the ironic music they were playing in that yeah. part, but it yeah. didn't work. Everybody love one another. Yeah, love it was brother, very like uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, but I think, you know, probably, I mean, not that that's not a reality now, but like in the 70s, I think audiences probably would, you know, because this is like a counterculture movie. It's right. like an answer to, mm-hmm. um, you know, like Easy Rider right. probably yeah, is like, yeah. that's where the, the legacy comes yeah. from. It's talking to the audience who's gulping all this stuff up. Right. You know, the police are all, the blue meanies. And, yep. you know, they're racist and, you know, mm-hmm. all this other stuff. Not that all of them are portrayed that way. Obviously, the state police or something are right. allowing, right. you know, keeping people back so Super Soul can come back No, it back definitely in. holds up today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it was just a rough scene. Yeah. It was a really rough scene. Yeah. That doesn't deter Super Soul, though, because he's still able to still uh, get back. Well, there is that one scene, I guess, where he's under duress. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Possibly leading Kowalski into I a trap. I like that, because mm-hmm. all they know is his voice. It's like, that's his voice. But right? I like that he, he had come to recognize it so much. Mm-hmm. Just within that, like, 24 that's hours, that he was deal, like, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is this him? Do you guys yeah. hear something different, or is it just me? Like. Mm-hmm. And was confirmed like, by Naked Lady. Well, I was like, <laughs> Sean also liked that scene for other reasons. Yes. <laughs> that scene, well, that, that is actually probably if you've seen Vanishing Point, that's one of the things like that I remembered about it was like, oh, it's the the naked girl on the on the motorcycle. Because yep. I mean, I guess it's what the 70s and the free love era. Mm-hmm. He meets a lot of hippie uh, folks, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. um, well, so that's who you're going to meet hitchhiking. Yeah. Right. And in the yeah. middle of fucking nowhere. Right. You cross just people living across the desert. Feral yeah, humans, one might say. Kinda. And we meet yes, some, they're on the edge. And we meet revivalists and snake That shit faith freaks healers. me out, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, faith healers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, that just, should freak you out. Yeah, like yeah, just, just saying. Anybody who's doing all that in just in the middle of the desert. Yeah, societies of people disconnected from like the mainstream reality freak me the fuck out. And I like I liked this scene. I mean, I don't know if we want to go into detail about what we're talking about yeah. here. What they um So he meets this like old prospector kind of guy who's like wrangling snakes mm-hmm. and, and putting them in a basket. Him in a basket. Yes. And, and this, he's but this guy pops up like he's the desert incarnate. He's just like yeah. he jumps out here. of a bush. Yeah. And like it's not it's not just snakes. It's like all rattlesnakes he has. All venomous yeah. snakes. Yeah. yeah. He has like all different kinds, all snakes, all terrifying. Um, and he says that he trades them. And you're like, like to supplies. who? Yeah. Out here in the middle of who? nowhere. He lists off like eight different groceries he gets for yeah, he's like, first I get beans. Beans. coffee and sugar yeah. and beans. So many beans. A lot of beans. <laughs> <laughs> but then they show who he's actually like trading with. And we're and like, snakes, a currency, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I love this scene when it shows like, I don't want to say the reverend because I don't know if that's what he is. Yeah. But whoever's like running this tent revival He's like really creepy, really weird, and he never actually says what he planned to use the snakes for. Mm -hmm. He was just like, well, I don't need them anymore because now we got music. Yeah. And he just like tosses them. But I love that he's so creepy and he never specifically says what they were going to use them for because it's like, what the fuck were they going to use them for? Yeah. That's the scary shit. Bite them and do some sort of. You don't ever see that. The you don't. Not in this movie. Not yeah, this movie. He but, I, says, but I've seen something yeah, they're like fa- that. He calls yes. them faith healers. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I think that's it. It's they like of... snakes. They were like, we can actually touch the snakes and God will protect us. Right. Yeah. Or if yes. it bites us, yeah, we can. Yeah, that's what I've seen. Yeah. Because yeah. I've seen documentaries where they talk to these people and snakes are always involved somehow mm. as yeah. part of their No, you assume that's good. what it's going to be, yeah. but they never specifically say and I think it just No, he's adds, like, we don't need them. We got the music now. It adds how creepy he is. Yeah, but well, I mean, I read him as creepy too or you know unsavory i don't exactly know why though because i mean like he all he basically is like why'd you bring that person out here this is a private you know because this 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 is the middle of nowhere this man could turn murderous in a second it does feel like like, if like if you went against jesus well and the, the thing is like if you're like if you're a standard christian man of god you should want strangers to come to your revival mm. so that they're saved. The yeah. fact that he's like, why did you bring him? You yeah. shouldn't have brought him. Because we right. went that way the fuck really, out here. So that that makes it cold. Then he yeah. will know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah it makes it, it really fucking yeah. creepy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, ten revivals um don't happen in the middle of nowhere. They go to cities and where there are people uh because they want to recruit people. They do happen yeah. in the country. Well, yeah, back in, back right. in the day they would happen right. in the country, but it would be like advertised. Yeah, exactly. It was they a thing that was coming to town. Yeah, There's exactly. A revival yeah. coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There'd be flyers because it was entertainment because they had nothing else going on. Right. So like, yeah, it was entertain they, me, Jesus. Yeah. Right. There's well, no yeah, benefit. They get you through the music, and they're yeah. like, "Do you also like Jesus?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, see, right, Holly. <laughs> they get you through the. You're right, Dude, <laughs> Holly. Didn't Elvis 2022 make tent revivals look fun? Yeah. That movie made them look yeah. real fun because that's like how that movie opens, and you're like, "All right, I get it, I get, I, I get it." And then you're like, "Yeah, yeah the music is how they get you." Uh, yeah, well, Sorry. maybe that's yeah. A, I'm a little triggered right because that's yeah. what I was actually thinking. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, was, was, "Were they using the snakes as like that's the reason people come to see them or join is yeah. because they're going to perform this like you know it's really like a dangerous Western thing, snake charming? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. we don't need that now because we got music, music yeah. brings people, yeah. in. They and they've got like a band up there that has like there's like a mom with her." kid you know yeah. attached to her and i'm not gonna i mean i'm not gonna lie that's not kind of slapped <laughs> <laughs> i think it was just because the rest of the movie is so silent oh my this God. movie is a ugh, silent movie there was a f- wow there was a few times that they would play up a, like a 70s song yeah it was, it was pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah but there was yeah. a lot of there was Slow, a lot of just quiet like, scenes silent, with no yeah. music. Yeah. There was a lot of quiet driving yep. yeah and just the sound of the, the, the road sound <laughs> the road we watched that guy and his guide dog walk all the way across town and all the way up the stairs into oh, the fucking soul? studio yeah. in real time. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, you're watching all the people. With no like, music. Watching him. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, Jesus Christ. I, I don't I, need that much slice of life. I can't imagine a town that would be more accepting of him, but I also wonder why he's in this town. You yeah. You know what I mean? Where the... Because it doesn't uh, seem like the it's the big. If it's, he's just, it's not welcoming to yeah, him. He's it doesn't heard seem. everywhere. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it seems like he'd be in a different place other right. than like. Like you know. I can see this town being only Jesus music. Yeah, not like housing like the soul DJ. Like a Footloose yeah. town. Yeah. <laughs> Question: Is Super Souls KOW in the town where the climax of the movie takes place? See, I thought that's what in was California. Happen. No, but no, I don't think it's so. a different town. Yeah. Okay. All right, I checking. thought they'd get there. I thought that that would end up happening, like because people kept gathering outside of the radio station. Yeah, at, and then the there's room. people mm-hmm. gathered at the climax. Right. So right. I thought eventually, like it would come to a head at that point, but you know, it, it doesn't. But yeah. yeah, it's it's a way. different town. Well, I guess you know the the thing I took from the prospector scene. It's like, well, you know, even when he's out there and he's at a crossroads, like literally, visually, literally, he's driving in mm-hmm. in figure yeah. eights in the desert. Great shots from the. Oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so just look, just just the one track crisscross and the other. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, again, it's a good looking. Movie. I think he gets out at that point, like right right by the crisscross area. It's like he's at a decision point or whatever. Yeah, right. You know, it's like yeah, there's a lot back. of literal figurative. <laughs> like, <laughs> look where you are right now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the prospector helps him hide from camouflage the car from the the, the helicopter and all that. Um, he meets uh, well. There's the gay couple. I think that uh, just married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That guy looks so familiar to me. Which and one? I, the one with the kind of the pockmarked uh, uh, face. Slinger. I've seen him in. Oh, yeah. no, the other guy. The one that asked if he was laughing at him? The guy who was in the back seat. No, the oh. guy in the front seat looked familiar oh, to me. Oh, the front seat? Yeah, he looks like Clinger. Played, like, yeah, I guess you can, yeah. I should get his name because I've seen him in other stuff where yeah. he always seems to be playing sinister characters. Yes, he's got that sinister face. Yeah, they try to rob him, but somehow he just magically laughs he's able to. Yeah, the car. like you're holding me up on this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is. I'm sorry. Their plan was to like pretend like they were stranded and then rob whoever picked them up, and they're in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. This, yeah, this is a terrible a, plan. It's a terrible plan. This, this is a highwayman, um, right? This is how it used to go down. It, yeah, yeah because, but you have to be on a highway where there is traffic, not the out colors, in the middle of like Death Valley um, or whatever. Uh, in cold blood, they did yeah, that a lot. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when they were going through, they would pull yeah. over. And- Right, but you got to be it. where other people are, though, for that yeah, to well, happen. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, not, anybody would come by. Yeah, exactly. Like, like they're in the middle yeah, of nowhere yeah. in Nevada. Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. stark it landscape. Seems like a poor, poorly planned situation. Yes. Yeah. Um, he also meets um the guy on the motorcycle on the Harley, right? Right. That uh, is like you know, hey Kowalski, because by then, like you know, everybody knows who Kowalski is. You know, yeah, they've been listening on the radio. Yeah, and- he's like the bandit at the. And he's like, you know, hey, you got some speed? And like, yeah, come back to my house. And that's where we meet Naked Girl on the bike. Yep. Um, kind of going along 
along. I looked her up. I was like, who who is this woman? Her name's uh, Gilda Texter, and uh, she ironically became a costume designer. She's uh, in the costume That's that so ironic. funny. That is so funny. <laughs> on a lot of movies that you have seen. None. In fact, yeah. I have minus experience based on this movie I was in. I have the most opposite of experience you could <laughs> right. have. I am not qualified for this at all. She's like, look, my mission is to clothe people on every set, Okay. Don't right. ask why. If that means I have to take my own and give it to yes. them. I will do it. That's how dedicated I am to you. I know how unpleasant it is to not have a yeah. costume. Yeah. yeah. Every you try riding a motorcycle butt ass naked in the desert. Well, apparently, yeah. she did it three other times in three other movies that, that I think uh, constitute her acting career. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, before she became, uh, I don't know, she's award winning, but very prolific uh, professional Good for her. costume Good designer. For her. Yeah. Um, they help him. They do um, help him, yeah. Get through a roadblock. Yep. Um, yeah, the hippie guy rides ahead <laughs> to yeah. see if it's actually blocked off because right. this is when there's like a false claim from the radio. Yeah, Super Soul is under duress. This is when like broken in. His voice is different, right? And yeah, yeah. he goes ahead and checks. Yep. Sure enough, there's roadblock, so he helps him clear the roadblock. In a pretty funny way. I thought it was pretty funny. You think at this point he turns her down because he doesn't want any reason to stay? stick around I th- oh her, she earthly. yeah because she's like uh can i do anything for you you know yeah well, he, I, I, he's very politely just like no. i think it's because he just has no reason left in life well that's kind of i'm just kind of saying the same thing it's just like but he also doesn't want I, I don't think it has anything to do with staying i think it's just like i don't want anything in life anymore right but i, I think there's that and he want. I, I think he wants to keep that you know like he doesn't i think he would have the ability to go back on that but he doesn't want to you know maybe i think that could be part of it well the I mean, one so right. he's like well i guess there is a question of what happens with because uh, he meets uh, several women he meets the the woman at the gas station mm-hmm. who tr- that triggers a flashback yeah. of his uh dead girlfriend yeah. or no 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 that triggers a flashback of the girl that he saved from yeah. the cop um something else i can't remember triggers the the dead girlfriend yeah so it's like okay and then so what happens with Charlotte Rampling? Because that's, I guess, She's the next a fucking ghost. So this scene's cut out of the American version, yeah. but she's like a hitchhiker in the dead of night and middle of night in the desert. Yeah, and he Nobody picks around. her up. Yeah, and then she starts getting all weird on him. Mm-hmm. You know, but she was like weird. She feels like she feels like an urban legend. You know, like the, the woman who waits inside of. Yeah, this is this is a like. This is an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because she's gone. Yeah. She's gone in the morning. She mm-hmm. mysteriously disappears. Yeah. She says something to the effect of, like, I've been waiting for you. Yeah. For a, a long time, patiently waiting yeah. all across the she's, country she's or all the across the world. She's the mistress of the road or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I know because I don't know, like, is she supposed to personify death? Is this like, was this like they were just trying to go way too allegorical metaphorical and i was Maybe. like he got that's, too far that's it's, what i think i think she yeah. was supposed to be like the angel of death i've been waiting for you yeah the only thing that i saw was that as like a constant visual motif seemed to be uh he was offered uh weed several times and refused it mm-hmm. and accepted it from her and then like then the ending happens yeah after she's the last person that he meets yeah. on the road so i don't know if that's foreshadowing or what but um weird intriguing intriguing but you think it's better off without it or better with it i, I mean I, I see what they were doing and uh, i don't i don't necessarily mind it so much but i think it was more confusing to the movie than anything okay because it's never like he he doesn't like stop and look around like where is she like she's just gone and he's okay with that and he, he doesn't know well he, he has that scene plays in the american one but uh in the morning after where he's like buttoning up his pants as he gets out of the car so then you're like well did he have sex with he kisses her and so there's right. the implication that they spent the night together it was like ghostbusters the ghost blowjob yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> but it's still he doesn't like seem to be looking for her mm. it it seems like he's just like getting I'm, up I'm in the not morning and entirely sure that he knows well, I don't think yeah. he does. That's what I'm saying. I think it's yeah. too confusing, oh, so, so I'm okay with it. They cut it out. Are you going, Sean? Like are you going with uh, he's so delirious from not having slept that he, I think he wakes up in the morning he's like, I don't even know if yeah, there was actually a girl here at all. I don't think he there because he was delirious. <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah. I take. I mean, he's but good. I also think that that's why yeah. they cut it because I think that it's that was an easy one to go. 
Yeah, we don't need that. Way, we can get rid of Everything yeah, like else it. we can take is literal in that one. At this point, like, he's yeah. like, he hasn't slept. He has hardly had anything to drink. He's just been running on speed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, he's probably hallucinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the next day, he wakes up and fires his way into a bulldozer. So they've set up, we, well, we've, we've set this up at the beginning right. of the movie. We watch as, like, these bulldozers come into this small town and, and set up, you know. So they're going to Very gonna slowly. Start. California. It's the whole cold open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's setting it up, and then we see the Charger, yeah, or the Challenger come in. Um, California is like we're gonna we're gonna do what you guys couldn't do in Nevada and and Denver. We're gonna we're gonna catch them because we've got high tech uh, st- strings across the road. They do. Tough. They have the whole <laughs> like facility them. and the researchers and the math and everything. They're yeah. on them. We have a whole room of secretaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, you give them more credit than that. One of them was knitting. <laughs> was she seriously? She was taking oh, a break. Awesome. She was knitting a bonnet. <laughs> take a lunch break? She was knitting a fucking bonnet. <laughs> you know, I a imagine that that's what pilots do when we're on planes because you know planes mostly fly themselves yeah. these days. I imagine pilots are up there so just crocheting and shit yeah. and whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like no, well, it was just you funny because I don't I don't know if you guys caught it. Like it was a scene where they were there was a bunch of them standing around like a like a. Uh, like a battle table where they're like planning yeah. and stuff and at the very end there's this woman knitting a pink bonnet I was like what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> no, they're, they're, yeah they're still okay sure. and everything. they can multitask yeah I, I yeah, that, they didn't linger on that. They went over to the board that lights up. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> That's what I saw. Sorry, I, I missed the moment. I know. I was like, <laughs> I missed it too. I was yeah. like, should I say something? I mean, they're not going to go back to it. So yeah, <laughs> knitting, knitting a pink bonnet. Anyway, well. Okay, so how do we read this ending? Uh, Kowalski does, uh, the beginning scene actually does have, uh, you know, as we see the foreshadowing of this, um, he pulls off the road and actually considers what's going to happen yeah. next mm-hmm. and then gets back in the car. He's like, well, I'm basically fucked. They're behind me. They're in front of me. So he gets back in the car and he drives full speed toward the, uh, that, that scene, though, barricade, of him stopping yeah. is, is missing from the the climax or right. did we just, just get him driving into yeah. the barricade so now we get that it's that same kind of same look he gave to charlotte rampling um who was the hitchhiker is kind of what he's given when he's going full speed into this barricade it, like he's he, sees he knows like, that it's it but from his point of view he sees like a golden light between the bulldozers mm-hmm. you know so we're like okay and i think at some point it's reflected on his face you yeah. know, he sees the this is his. Light. This is his freedom. This is his release. Is that it? Yeah. It's like oh, the yeah. lone yes. free soul is not going to be taken in. He's going to. It's a terminal trip. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. But what about the person that purchased this car? Oh. Yeah, this. <laughs> I, well, I, I I felt empathy <laughs> for Michaela, that person Michaela the moment he jumped about the car. The business side of it. <laughs> I just the, the economics. Uh, of someone the was expecting their delivery and he blew it up. Yeah. Sean, if you bought something, <laughs> he well, he doesn't give a shit. Sean, if you bought something in the Amazon or the fucking would, UPS delivery driver blew himself up instead of delivering it to you, you'd be like, "What I'm, the hell, sure, man?" I'd be upset, but, yeah. But that, I, I'm like. That guy doesn't owe me anything technically. Like no, but well, n- th- yeah, actually, this one and yes, he does because he's the only person responsible for delivering this car. Yeah. Yeah. It's but not I mean, like a UPS truck full of packages. It is, mean, the car have, is supposed to be delivered. We have to right. assume that he was using a service and his money will be refunded. There you go. Yeah, I got insurance. On the Even though it's like, how many of these? Like you know. Well, I mean, I guess he's not getting it from a dealer. Where or was he? Oh, we don't it's know. Like, it's never established. How that guy like ordered that car? Yes, because it's, it's got the pistol grip shifter. Yeah, and all this stuff. <laughs> Unless it was stock, I don't know. But yeah, I have to assume <laughs> that the delivery service is going to refund his money yeah. because they are liable in this uh, This is, yeah, like, uh, could I you imagine? I way too worried about this aspect of the movie. I'm just saying, there's some person in California who's like, <laughs> yeah. very who's watching them. the news. I would have loved if they would have put this scene and they just cut to some guy watching the news just like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's his, he sees his car just like in flames on the news and he's well, like, oh my God. But I, 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 am, I am with you because yeah. the, the moment he jumped that car right yeah. over the, I'm like, this is somebody else's car. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're just like, yes. boom, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. It's covered with dust. And well, I thought the one that he delivered at the very beginning before the Challenger was all like, he drove, yeah. that, he drove that one hard too. <laughs> yes. yes. I don't know. Maybe they don't necessarily need the body to be in perfect condition. I don't know. 
I would yeah, think like you is do. he delivering it for parts? I yeah, think you're delivering it for. Like, and stuff. Yeah. Who knows? Well, it's know. a '70 Charger, and the movie's 1971. I'm gonna yeah, guess it's, it's a, right, new yeah. a new car. <laughs> this is <laughs> why you put that right. shit on those semis with the racks so they can just yeah, 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 yeah. That's the how they do it now. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. wasn't the guy in the Hitcher like also driving? He was I delivering so. a car. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. Anyway, yes, Fiery and uh, Kowalski. Yeah, I didn't. Although, is he dead? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> Do they find a body? What does he have to live for at this point? Yeah. No, he's, he's dead. dead. But yeah. I also don't go looking for a. The movie doesn't go looking for a body. I don't the, well, the, in see, 1971, we didn't need to. Yeah. Right. It's we not. Don't, we don't have that rule back then where it's like if they don't show the body, he's still alive. Yeah, no, no it's 71. Yeah. yeah. We know he's we're dead. Not yeah. Brain yeah. Too much yeah. We know he's dead. Yeah, I I think obviously he's dead, but I was. And they just, can't do any DNA testing yet either, so well, it's I just like see, they they have shots of people like sifting through the charred rubble, and then I guess it did occur to me. I'm like, oh, is his body in there? Did he like you know? Was there some kind of because we've established it's a supernatural out. movie? Uh, Super Soul has a psychic connection with him. Did he like somehow transcend space and time and like he shot through that golden? Calm down. Okay. No, okay. no, just calm down. You're you're reading too you're much too into much. it. Vanishing Point, I guess, has become a, uh, I mean, it sold a shitload of Dodge uh, Challengers. I think it's still looked at as like the Dodge Challenger movie, the Kowalski Challenger. Unfortunately, none of them exist. There are five in the movie. I think they were all destroyed um, making the movie. Um, but it's a collector's item now, and it shows up. So I we mentioned the Guns N' Roses um, song, but also mm-hmm. I don't think we mentioned on the show Audio Slave. Oh uh, yeah, Audio Slave yeah. did a, did a uh, I'll, 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 okay music video for it. It's mostly the movie. I think it's a good music video with their, songs, with their song put over it. it just yeah. puts them in the in the Challenger. Yeah, and then they get out and they stand around looking like a a, a, a '90s band for a little mm-hmm. while, and then they get back in, and then yeah. it's mostly movie with close ups of them looking around. It's it's an early whatever music video so, yeah. or 2000s music video i would say but yeah they did and the pop culture i suppose the biggest uh pop culture edifice to vanishing point is quentin tarantino's death proof mm-hmm. um a lot you know, of that movie is dedicated to i mean like that's the reason the girls are gonna in, you know gonna go uh to their their the in the town they're shooting the movie in there is a 1970s <laughs> nudge challenger right. white it's the Kowalski Challenger, and so like that. There's new action scenes shot with the Vanishing Point, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Challenger in the movie Death Proof. So that was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, there it is. It's a Vanishing uh, Point. Vanishing Point and the the Challenger. We hardly knew ye. Although I got to tell you, like of all the um, the muscle cars, the the sports cars. At least where we are here in the Midwest, like uh, the these cars, the Challengers outweigh everything else that I see on the street. Yeah. Uh, like I don't know, ten to one. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> as far as what seeing them around? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can't like drive down the street without seeing like one or two of them. It seems like now they got those nice yellow inset. Uh, I've never like, really uh, noticed. Yeah, you might you the, look at that grill. Like you're gonna silver gray. <laughs> To them. Oh, they're they're all colors. I see them all over the place. Yeah, driving around. I'm with my driving one. Because you start looking, it's like, well, there's a lot of uh, challengers and chargers, and yeah. not a whole lot of like. Uh, then you get some Mustangs or the Camaros or like dart, a re- or where uh, beast here and there. Right. What's that new? See Dodge. Right. They have the the Hornet. It's the SUV oh. that has like some crazy engine in it that can sprint from zero to six. Like, but it's, it's also an SUV. For moms, right? Yeah. Moms going to pick up their kids. Are gonna yeah, go I was on like, a, who, who needs <laughs> that? Yeah, drive away. Like that, there's a certain yeah. point. But right? that's that's there's why people point. love Dodge because who needs this? And they're right. Right. But at a certain I point, that. I don't get it. I'm just like, why are we putting this in a minivan? Like, because we don't need you it. can. That is the I guess. the essence See, of the I would need that because I want to go fast, but I like SUVs. Yeah. That's for me. Well, they go Dodge is your brand. Then they're they're out there trying to serve that need, <laughs> like speed for the normal man, for the everyday folk. Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, the Camaro is also, I think, ending next year, and that will leave just the uh, the Mustang. The Mustang alone. will probably live forever. Or uh, we'll see. Or at least it will for a while anyway. Mm. I will. Well, uh, thank you for sticking with us this far. And now we're going to go around the table and we're going to tell you what we thought of uh, tonight's movie. But first. Mm-hmm. We are going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. 
Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He has a tiny challenger. Oh, I was because he has a sidecar on the challenge. <laughs> Either or. Hey, not the, well, not the dark. Tiny challenger with a sidecar with a tiny. I always wanted to in ride in a sidecar. It looks yeah. fun. Yeah, that'd be but a little scary because oh, you're not sure. in control at all. Right. You know, and you're also but... like. You're on this. If you sideswipe something, yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. drivers are gonna be like, "Oh well, we lost it." Right. What are those like? Um, I mean, I guess they're technically uh, ATVs, but they're those like three wheel cars. Yeah, like the yeah. Polaris the midlife crisis they're... car. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like it's a called... sports car, yeah. but it's not because yeah. only has. Yeah, but three wheels. I've never seen anyone under like sixty driving one. I'll it's say true. that. So they usually are seen on Sundays. Yep. Uh, yep. Sun- bright yep. Sunday mm-hmm. afternoons, mm-hmm. Yep. mornings. Not made for speed cars. Yeah. Um, it's it's when you want the like look of a midlife crisis without the risk, you know. Sure. So because I think yeah. they have to be like, well, I mean, it's an ATV. It's not like an actual. Well, it's still street legal. People drive them on the street. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I see people my neighbor who drive ATVs on the street though. So yeah, you know. well, that, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't stop anyone. Yeah, that's a whole another mm-hmm. kettle of fish. Um, but anyway, we should uh, remind people how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Saturday Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Vanishing Point, Mark Zidane writes in and says it's one of the greatest car movies of all time and an amazing soundtrack. I can remember watching it as a kid with my cousins and uncle, and I will always remember the first time seeing a naked woman on a dirt bike. <laughs> and I'm so happy you chose the original version and not the TV remake starring Viggo Mortensen. Oh, yeah. I yeah. forgot to tell you the differences. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are the differences? Well, there's a lot more plot uh, sure. involving... Uh, but the, it's not as quiet. No. Um, but one of the primary things is the reason that uh, Kowalski accepts the, the job and is going fast. It's not because he's doing drugs. It's on TV. Mm-hmm. He's got to get to San Francisco before his wife gives birth. Oh. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil what happens, but don't it like does that. have a yeah, different like ending no. than the, the original like movie. No, the, you don't have to give a reason for everything. Mm-mm. The guy just wants to fucking drive. Yeah. Uh, it's more existential, right? Mm. The 70s. Yeah. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan writes in and see, says, I see the screenshot from the movie and I immediately think death proof. Awesome choice. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, says uh, ah, so this is where death, the death proof reference comes from. This is one of those movies I've always known the name of, but otherwise know nothing about it. Yep. It's also cool to see Cleavon Little in another movie. I've only ever known him from Blazing Saddles and as the gay vampire in Once Bitten. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's the Jim Carrey. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. Holy shit, I forgot about that. Uh, Travis Legler says, it's movies like this, Smokey and the Bandit, The Wraith, Christine, The Blues Brothers, Bullet, and even Back to the Future with that sexy DeLorean that made me fall in love with cars. It's fun to see them do crazy stunts and keep going when, unfortunately, the real cars would get damaged and the next one would be needed for filming. Movies like this and the one... And the ones listed also make the Fast and Furious movies easier to watch and enjoy. The Fast movies really are just callbacks to the crazy 70s, 80s car movies, but they feel the need to push what is possible far beyond the limits of the suspension of disbelief. That's right, because in we established in one of the Fast and Furious movies, they go to space. They do indeed. There's another, um, it's, it's like car movie light. It's a John Wayne movie called Q. Oh, yeah. That, that's another good uh, movie it's like yeah, it's bullet ish like he's a cop and you know what's he drive because bullet was the ford I'm mustang look it up because it's a uh, yeah. it's another green car like from bullet I'm smoking in the bandit is the pontiac trans am mm-hmm. thunderbird right thunderbird he's got the big yeah famous cars mm-hmm. what's mac max ren tikowski drive some interceptor uh, trans am trans am and a navy and blazer McHugh? and a 1973 trans am and McHugh, yeah. okay. mm-hmm. Bumblebee, of course, is a Camaro. Anyway, uh, last week we watched a movie called "I Know What You Did Last Summer." And I still, I still know what you did last summer. What did I say? I know. I know. I right. Know. It says right in front of me. I still know what you did last <laughs> summer. Sorry about that. R.J. Skrenke says it's one of my faves of all time. Huh? Saw this in the theaters and had a blast. I still enjoy. Uh, we also <laughs> the week before that we watched a movie called Deep Star Six. 
Um, actually, Travis Legler writes in again. He says, I feel like the monster is a mix of the 98 Godzilla and a Graboid. Uh, I remember when Miguel Ferrar was on the show crossing Jordan with Jill Hennessy, who was in RoboCop 3, yeah. and I've always wondered if they talked about the quality of their RoboCop movie. Yeah. That's something you got to bring that. up, right? Yeah. Like, I, did oh, I forgot about crossing Jordan. That was on for forever. Yeah. Well, he also points out that Miguel Ferrar, I don't remember this. He was in the TV, he says TV movie project, ALF. I'm like, I remember ALF as a TV show. Was Miguel Ferrar in ALF? I Probably. Okay. Who knows? No idea. I'm not an elf person. No. Yeah. Richard Kratzer says, uh, Deep Star 6 looks like they just repurposed Chris Wallace's creature prop from The Fly 2. They both were released the same year. Wallace actually directed The Fly 2, so it's possible they just made a few changes and voila! You've got yourself an underwater fly crustacean cre- sea creature thingy. I mean, I've never seen likely. the fly too. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. And we did the fly too. Uh, that might have been before. We, we did fly too. Yeah, we did fly too way back in the day. Yeah, I was Go not back here for that. The, yeah, I was not here for that. Um, we've done 500. You keep in count 500 and something. Are we close on 600 um, episodes. There's I think a lot I, uh, in the back. We'll see. We'll see. Let me let me check. Uh, Joey Blythe says thanks for mentioning Riptide. Right, uh, what she did on Deep Star Six. Yeah. Um, he says, I just recently figured out what the show was. I would tell anyone I remembered a show with an orange robot on a boat and just got blank stares. Okay. Oh, and another aquatic ish weird monster movie I've seen is Slithus, aka Spawn of the Slithus. So, there you go, you got to put that Spawn Slithus, Slithus. Yeah. Well, I'm into Slithus. on your okay. radar. I like when Spawn is oh. in the title yeah. of movies. I like when monsters spawn. <laughs> <laughs> the aliens deadly spawn. The return of the aliens deadly spawn. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh. Oh my God. We're recording episode 550 right now. 550. 550 right, right now is what oh, you're listening shit. to. 550. Okay. A lot of movies. 550. We've, we've yes. listened, watched. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking movies. <laughs> wow. And I think I remember movies. eight of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Project Elf, a 1996 movie starring Miguel Ferrar. Oh, and wow. A few, and I, Martin Sheen? Jesus. No, wait. Elf, Martin, not about Martin like Sheen, Paul Fusco, William O'Leary. Uh, he, yeah, he's in it. It's about uh, Elf's been captured by the military and they what play the military fu- guys. What? So the- ET, they did ET with Elf, basically. <laughs> wow. That's People want Elf wow, destroyed. No idea. Right? So, yeah, Project Elf. Wow. Jesus. Whoa. Did uh, you guys know that Elf was thanks, like. Thanks, Travis, for yeah. <laughs> pointing out that. Bring that to our Did you guys know working on Elf was like horrible for everyone involved? Because they had um, they had holes in the floor was everywhere. Puppet was a star. They had holes in the floor everywhere, so the puppet could come up, and people were constantly falling in these fucking holes and hurting themselves. There was a fuck ton of injuries on the set of Alf because they had to have <laughs> trap doors everywhere for that motherfucking puppet to pop up. So <laughs> people hated working on that show. Yeah, yeah, for me, just hide behind. What the was couch. the plan? He was from. Mm-hmm. He liked eating cats, right? He like yeah, he would eat cats. Yeah. That's why I don't like him. I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch <laughs> yeah, yeah, Alf yeah. always. Rub me the wrong way. Oh, Always. really? I oh, never. Yeah, I, was I was like, really something's wrong with that motherfucker. I was yeah. never an elf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't like it. He makes my hackles go up. I, yeah. I just don't, don't never trust it. Yeah. What was the, was it Unhappily Ever After that had puppets in it as well? With, um, I'm not familiar with no, this. No, with, uh, it had uh, Nikki Cox, I think, in it. The guy who directed Gotti. What's his name? Kevin from... I I from know. Entourage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't oh, know who you're no, talking about. No the guy from my Entourage, but no, puppets? I do not remember this. It had, it had a puppet, like a dog puppet, voiced by Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh, oh, oh. fucking hell! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh Does my no god. Remember this? I do remember okay. that. What was this called? I think it's called Unhappily, Unhappily Ever After. after. Look Holy up. shit! Look it up. Yeah, Nikki Cox. What's his name from there? Kevin Summer or other, and he, a fucking dog puppet voiced oh by the guy Bobcat Goldthwait. I think the dad was the guy was um, from Grace Under Fire, Grace's ex husband. I forgot his name. He's in it. Oh, yeah. Talk about another miserable set. Oh, my God. Grace Under Fire. Everyone hated each other. Yeah, look that one up. There's for your puppet stuff. And also, remember Elijah Wood. Like, wasn't Elijah Wood like talk to uh, a guy who, like, his dog? Is this what you're talking about? Am I looking at the right thing here? Wilfred? Wilfred, I'm not seeing a puppet. There's a puppet in there. Not in that picture. Not in the the promo artwork. But in that show, there's a puppet. Okay. But yeah, uh, yeah, Wilfred. Wilfred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird. Oh, this sounds really dark. And not so happy family is divided further when the father gets a schizophrenic disorder. Oh, Oh, no. There's a puppet. Yeah. (laughs) It is a dark comedy. Ooh, don't like this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Kevin Connolly. Shit. Justin Burfield from Malcolm in the Middle is in this. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Maybe Joyce Van Patten. Lost the time, I guess. Yeah. Wow. 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 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, 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 y
It's always magical when you see a movie more than once in theaters. You know, it? a movie's good when I'm okay with seeing it in 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. We were like, well, yeah, let's see it in 3D. Yeah, yeah. Great. Which was. They awesome. go back for the black and chrome one or whatever. I, I watched own, that at home. I, I watched that at home. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. it was fun. Yeah, it was yeah. a good time. There's a good aspect to it. Uh, yeah. You do miss a lot of kind of like the colors. And, yeah. 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 But it is yeah. a good version of yeah. it. Yeah. God, I love that movie. Okay, yep. sorry. Michaela. Uh, I, I love seventies movies and how they ha- like the grime that they have mm-hmm. to them and just like the realness and how lo-fi and just like real deal and gritty and technical they are. Yeah. I really appreciate about that about all movies of the seventies. It's just like unreplicated. We've never been able to get back to that. And um, it's like you listening know, to a record. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And like you know, Easy Rider gets a lot of the credit for being the blueprint that caused that cultural shift. And while that's true, like you can't forget the little movies like this along the way. Um, that being said, I'm not a car person, not a car movie person. This does nothing for me. Uh, I just don't enjoy car content. It's not for me. If it's for you, that's great. There's a little, probably a lot more you'll get out of this than I got out of it. Like, your mileage may vary, literally. Like, it, it, I, it just doesn't work for me. I don't enjoy car stuff, and it just is, doesn't do anything it, for there me. There is usually in... And you'd probably find little detours to do other things within a movie. Yeah. This is a lot of car. This is only car. <laughs> this is, yeah. this is straight this is a, car. There is, the plot is very thin in this movie. And <laughs> yeah, I literally was car. like, I don't know what we're going to talk the about. I did not know how we were going to fill yeah. an hour on this movie because it takes a long time for anything to happen that isn't just relatively silent driving. So it, it's not for me. So I'm not going to recommend it. But if you're a car person, you might be viewing this movie from an entirely different lens than I am. So. I guess you would know best if you should watch this or not based on that. So you I'm must not, watch it to know if you should watch it. I'm, I mean, if I feel like you either like cars or you don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you, you know, would, you're I either a car person or you don't. Yeah. Movie, yeah. But like that being said, I also I don't watch Fast and Furious movies either. Like I haven't no. seen any of those. Like I don't watch any kind of car movie. Right. This isn't unique to this really, movie. Yeah, you're so this yeah, movie yeah. Like, I'm just this is just not Do you for like me. Gone so in 60 seconds. It's, I've seen it like once. You know, I've seen just it the curious. one time. You know, just and I, yeah. I thought it was fine. You know, but um, there's too much redundancy in this subgenre for me. But. Fair. Um, I mean, I drive a fucking Rav Four with a V8 in it, so I can tow stuff. You know, like I, you know, I have a powerful engine. I don't do anything with it, so you know, that's where I'm at with cars. So I'm going to pass on it. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) An Alexa powered one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pass on Vanishing Point. Um, and I'm not curious enough to check out the Vigo Mortensen one. I'm good on that. So pass on all versions. Uh, Colin, what do you think? (laughs) Well, I appreciate you mm-hmm. sitting through it anyway. No, I, no. I, because I get that. I, I it's was kinda, good to go outside your comfort zone. Yeah, that's you know? kind of what I was like. I'm like, we haven't really done. I mean, we have done like The Wraith, you yeah. know, which ha- which, which featured a car. Which is so different, though. Yeah. Christine is a movie that, you know, is really about yeah, like a, right a guy's love for his first car, you know. It's a possession movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this I've, was like, I'm like, do we have listeners out there who are like yeah. car, car guys, you know, car people? I figured like, well, this will probably be as far as we go in the subgenre. Yeah, Other, I've, I've thought about bringing Duel, but this oh, is yeah. more exciting. Duel's way more sleepy. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> see, that comes from that same era where it seems yeah. like, um, I guess because you know, the car manufacturers started getting into like performance and this is right before, like it all got shut down. There was the gas uh, shortage, you know, and then the emission rules and all this stuff that kind of like sucked this right out. But I mean, it was hot rods, you know, in the fifties and guys wanting to juice up their cars. And then they made movies about guys who were juicing up their cars. I mean, titles like uh, dirty, Larry, crazy, Mary, um, a uh, two lane uh, or a dirty Mary, dirty Larry, crazy Mary, yeah. dirty, dirty Mary, crazy Larry, isn't yeah. that right? Yeah, uh, two lane blacktop, uh, the original Gone in sixty seconds, yeah. which is a literal like nonstop car chase <laughs> yeah. for like the entire thing. Smokey and the Bandit like yeah. blew up all over the place. Yep. Mad Max, you know, um, like the, there's like the white driver. Line fever. I think is one of the, is that's one a trucker. Called. That's a trucker yeah. movie with Jan Michael Vincent. It's yeah, actually yeah, yeah. pretty good. Jan Michael Vincent. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys remember how I didn't know he was a real person until he died? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he was a joke on Rick and Morty. For Star like two of Airwolf. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I I really like this movie. Um, to me, it's my Easy Rider. Like, I really don't it, care that, for that Easy vibe, Rider. Yeah. So I would I can understand that. I guess I would pick this one and um 
I mean, I saw it a long time ago. Then, you know, it was kind of nice seeing Death Proof being like, you know, oh, I know this movie that they're talking mm-hmm. about. And, you know, makes you want to. And I, I had seen the Viggo Morton someone like on accident, you know. Um, how uh, 99.9% of the audience saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's. Vanishing Point is a very nice looking movie uh john alonzo is the cinematographer on it but i mean obviously he carries a lot of the credit on this for just the yeah. landscapes you know it's like it's a it's a cosmic uh it just makes everything feel so small dwarfed by this like magnificent huge landscape and i suppose it's supposed to be like you know you know ultimately the cosmos cares little about like the yeah. the, the, right. the the cares of us and you come to crossroads you make decisions and you know i mean it's an existential yeah. movie but it i is, think yeah. it does also i think it becomes more an existential movie like you said with the inclusion of the charlotte rampling scenes yeah. and once you take that out it is more of a you know action movie um <laughs> still existential yeah i mean it's there but it's less like nail on the head is like that's the only real i mean aside from super soul has that you know the connection which i guess where you could say is supernatural but you know you guys don't understand each other well, he, he has like a there's a two way conversation like He's later in the movie the where it's like one guy's yeah. talking back. That's, yeah, that's it's no, cut very well. That's knowing your audience. Yeah, yeah. I um uh, because I guess in my memory of it when I was like you know should I bring this to the freak show is it just like you know long vistas and nothing happening but then I was like no it's actually it moves I think because it cuts between those two mm-hmm. um, storylines. Um, I really liked it. Um, I have uh, I have driven a, a Dodge uh, Challenger. I rented one for my nephew. He's a big oh, fan. Yeah. So I got I got behind the wheel of one uh, recently. I go to car shows and all this stuff. So uh, that's kind of you know like I guess this is the year that they're 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 getting rid of them. So I felt like it was appropriate to uh, to go and bring back the movie that showcased it the best. There you go. Yeah, we're gonna salute the uh, the outgoing. Dodge Challenger RT. Mm-hmm. That's a rally track. No, Colin's gonna like grab the last one and just slide up. The Dodge He's Demon One Seventy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Right. Um, yeah. So I would recommend Vanishing Point. You should check it out. Next week we are going to watch a movie that is chosen by Sean. Are we watching Convoy next week? No, <laughs> right? that's another one. Oh my god! Well, that's the CB. That and Smokey and the Bandit to the CB era. Yeah, yeah. No, no Convoy. <laughs> No, we watch no, no cars in the next one. Okay. Uh, next week, we will be watching 2018's Upgrade. Oh, oh wow. Boy. Okay. All right. All right. Coming to the... Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. It's like the, it's like the, the, the virus the better, venom. The better venom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the better venom. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we oh, so we're watching that next week. We hope you'll join us, and until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.